Hey, you guys. So this is problem number six from chapter eight. Oh, it's number. Excuse me. This is problem number eight from chapter six. And for this problem, we have a current that we know to be negative 10 amps before the uh, time zero. And then after time zero, we have the current to be negative 10 cosine 400 t plus 5 sine 400 t times e to the minus 200 t amps. And um, what we're looking for is we're looking for in part A, the time where the voltage is a maximum. And um, in part B, we're looking for, um, we're going to find out what exactly is that voltage at that time. So the way to solve that is to um, recall that when you're talking about inductors, oh, and in this case we're working with a 25 millihenry inductor, that V, the voltage of an inductor is L D I D T. And so our strategy is going to be, we need to find out what that formula is um, in order to, um, because to find a maximum, um, the maximum, um, we're going to have to use the first derivative to set it to equal to zero. And once we do that, um, we can figure out what that time is. And then in part B, we simply plug that time back into the voltage function that we found in part A. So at this point, you should pause the video and try all those steps and see if you come up with the right answer that I come up with. Um, OK, so let's get started. As we stated, we need to find the voltage function so that we can set the first derivative equal to zero. So um, to keep the numbers easy, I'm not going to write down the L. I'm going to put that in at the very last step. Just because there's so many places to make um, mistakes as far as errors, uh, calculation errors. Um, I had to work out this problem a couple times because I kept making plus, minus, um, plus minus mistakes and it affected the answer. So we'll come back to that. We'll multiply everything through by 25 millihenries at the very last part after we find the DIDT. So to compute the DIDT, we have the derivative of that. So DDT of that is going to be this times the derivative of E plus E times the derivative of that. That's the product rule. So let's start with um, first, we fix the first one 10 cosine 400 T plus 5 sine 400 T. Derivative of E to the negative 200 T is negative 200 E to the minus 200. T. That's the first part. The second part is going to be fix the E. E to the minus 200 T times the, the derivative of what's inside. Okay, so now the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we're going to have negative 10. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So times negative 400 sine. 400t. The derivative of sine is just cosine. So we have plus 5 times 400 sine of 400t. Okay, at this point, we have one term here. This here is the first term, and this is the second term. What we have in common in both terms is the e to the minus 200t. And therefore, I can factor out the e to the minus 200t. So I'm going to do that. e to the minus 200t. e to the minus 200t times. Now I'm going to start combine, uh, distributing values through. When I distribute this through, Negative 200 times 10 is a positive 2,000. So I have 2,000 cosine 400, cosine 400 t. Negative 200 times 5 is negative 1,000. So negative 1,000 sine of 
find 400 T. And then down here, we have 4,000 plus 4,000 sine 400 T. And negative 10 times 5, oh, excuse me, 5 times 4,000 is going to be plus 2,000 sine 400 T. Okay. And then now terms combine. We have sine and sine. 4,000 minus 1,000 is 3,000. 2,000 plus 2,000 is 4,000. So everything reduces to e to the minus 200t times um, 4,000 cosine 400 T plus 3,000, yes, 3,000 sine 400 T. Okay, now remember that is only di dt. That was only this part. Now we have to multiply through by 25 millimeters to get the actual voltage. So we will do that now. So we multiply through by 25 million Henry's. We multiply this by 25, um, 25 million Henry's. We're going to end up with 100 here. Multiply that by 25 million Henry's. We will end up with 75. Okay. So that means V of T. The official voltage function is E to the minus 200 T times 100 cosine. 400 T plus 75 sine 400 T. Okay. Now we have our voltage function. We can differentiate it to find the time where this function is at a maximum. So we need to differentiate. This one is a lot easier. So let's go. Derivative of, let's take this times the derivative of this term plus this times the derivative of that term. And that's just going to be, again, an application of product rule. So e to the minus 200 t times the derivative of this. Um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we're going to end up with 100 times negative 400 times sine of 400 T. And then for this one, we're going to have, and the derivative of sine is just cosine, so we have plus 75 times 400 sine of 400 T. And that's the first part of the product rule. Taking a second to make sure I didn't make mistakes because it is so easy to do that. Now, the second part of the product rule, I'm going to fix the first term, which is 100 cosine 400 T plus 75 sine of 400 T. And we're going to take the derivative of e to the minus 2T, which is negative 200 E to the minus 200 T. Now again, I have e to the minus 200 t in common, which I will factor out. e to the minus 200 t. And what's left in the inside will simplify. This is negative 40,000. So let's take a look at the signs. Negative 40,000. And this will be negative 200 times. So let's see. I have negative 400 times. 100 for my first sine term right here. My second sine term has 75 times negative 200 plus 75 times negative 200. That will give me negative 55. So here I will have negative 55,000 sine of 400t. 
Okay, and the second must combine the cosines. So over there, this uh, this should be a half and cosine because the derivative of the sine is cosine. So um, hold up. No, that's right. Okay, so now we're going to combine the cosines, and we have seventy-five times uh, four hundred for that term. And then over here we have another cosine, which is going to be negative 200. So plus negative 200 times 100, I will end up with 10,000 plus, plus 10,000 cosine of t, of 400 t. Okay, that's our derivative. So now we need to set this equal to zero because when we set the, the derivative when it's zero tells us either a maximum, a minimum, or a point of inflection. In this case, it's going to give us the maximum. And we're looking for the maximum. So, um, well, when will this term be zero? This term will be zero when either this term is zero or when e to the minus um, 200t is zero. And e to this term will be zero when t is approaches infinity, which means the power is dissipated, which is a trivial problem, and we don't care. So we don't really care about this term because all it says is that as time goes to infinity, it'll go to zero, and will be no big deal, right? Well, what is interesting is what about this term? When this goes to zero, that's that's the time that we're looking for. So when I set that part to zero, set it to zero. So we have negative 55,000 sine 400 t plus 10,000 cosine of uh, 400 t equals 0. When is that equal to 0? Well, it will equal to 0 when they're equal to each other. So let's do like this. So then we end up with negative 55,000 sine of 400 t is equal to negative 10,000 cosine 400 t. Now, the tools we have for solving um, angles are sine, cosine, tangent, arc tangent, and all the other jazz. So I see that. Um, I need to get rid of either, I need to get rid of sine and cosine and solve and bring the t out. So I'm going to do that using tangent. I know that sine, or I could, I could use cotangent too, but my TI-89 does not have cotangent, so I'm choosing tangent. Um, we know sine over cosine is tangent, so we want some tangent is equal to some number. That's what we want. And so I know that I'm going to need to divide by cosine. I want sine over cosine for my tangent, so cosine of 400. T, I need this coefficient to be 1, so I'm going to divide by negative 55,000. So then this goes away right here, and this becomes tangent of 400 T is equal to negative 10 over 55. No, positive 10 over 55. And therefore, T will be arctangent. 10 over 55 divided by 400. And when you put that into your calculator, you will find that the t for part a, the time will be 0.45 maximum of 0.45 milliseconds. And for part b, very simple, you simply put it back into the voltage function that we found in part a and um, and that's actually pretty messy to do on the TI-89, but when you do that, you should come up for your V max of your volt to maximum voltage is 102.2 volts. And remember, the voltage function from part A, well, you just go back in the video to find it, but uh, yeah, so there you have it. That's the answer to problem number eight.